He reached down from heaven and rescued me. He drew me out of the deep waters. He led me to a place of safety. He rescued me because he delights in me. Psalm 18, 16, and 19. This is the life verse for our guest on today's program, who several years ago attempted suicide by laying across railroad tracks and was run over by 33 freight cars at 55 miles an hour. Today, she will share how God has led her life since then. Stay tuned. and welcome to Everlasting Love. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the music at the beginning of the program. We're so thankful that you guys joined us today. We just want to let you know that God loves you with an everlasting love, that there's nothing you're doing or could do that would stop His love for you, that He cares about you and He cares about your life, what is going on right now, and so do we. And we just want you to know that if there's something you see on this program, if you need someone to pray with you, if you need to learn about a church or where you can find one in your neighborhood, please don't hesitate to call us at 
286-2171. And also you can email us um, at our website at www.everlastinglovetv.com. We also have a YouTube channel where you can watch this episode and many others about God's redeeming grace um, at www.youtube.com slash everlastinglovetv. We're just so thankful that you could join us and um, if there's anything we can do for you, please don't hesitate to contact us. Today, we have on the show Kristen Jane Anderson, and she's a guest that we've had with us before, so we're th so thankful that you came back. Um, she is the founder of Reaching You Ministries, and she also has recently written a book called Life in Spite of Me. It's a very beautiful book right here. Um, thanks so much for coming back, Kristen. How Thank are you? you? I'm doing well. I'm excited to be here. It's an honor and a pleasure to be back. Oh, good. I'm so happy. Um, you came on a couple of years ago to talk about um, your suicide attempt. Mm -hmm. And I know that everyone hasn't seen that episode. Mm -hmm. So the main focus of today's show is what you've done after. But just to um, update on people who may not have heard your story, would you just give us a brief synopsis of what happened and, you know. Sure how God used that. Definitely. When I was a child, I had a pretty easy childhood, but mm -hmm. my teenage years were very difficult. I lost four different friends. I lost my grandmother and I was raped. And it was those things that happened in such a short period of time that ended up leading me to a place of suicide. I didn't mm -hmm. know that God had a plan for my life or that he was, you know, showing me that he loved me or anything. I was just completely numb to, to him and to the world. And when I tried to take my life, I did that by laying on a set of train tracks. Mm. I was run over by 33 freight train cars at 55 miles per hour, and I lost eight pints of blood. Wow. And I've been told that you're supposed to die after you lose five, and that it's a miracle that I survived. And that yeah. was one of the things that helped me realize that God was real, that He was in work in the midst of my circumstances, in the midst mm -hmm. of my life, and that He might really care about me. Mm -hmm. It was about three months after my suicide attempt that I became a Christian. Okay. And I would have told people my whole life that I was a Christian, um, but I didn't have a relationship with God. I had never asked Jesus to forgive me for my sin or mm -hmm. chose to let Him lead my life. I was really completely distant from Him, but I thought I was a Christian. When I did surrender my life to the Lord, accept Jesus' forgiveness for mm -hmm. everything I had done, even my own suicide attempt, and choose wow. to let Him lead my life, my life started to be transformed. I ended up getting off of all my antidepressants and all my pain meds that I had been told by my doctors that I'd have to take for the rest of my life. I've been off of them for 10 years now. Oh, wow. And after that, I, I just continued walking closer and closer to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the more that I walked towards Him, the more I felt like I was just having a completely transformed life. Not only was I walking out of my depression, but my family was being transformed. My mom, my dad, my sister, and my brother all surrendered their lives to the Lord and started living for Him. And it just brought us together closer as a family in some special, very special and amazing ways. And I started getting asked to share my story at the youth group at our church and at some other churches. Mm -hmm. And from there, my life continued to just um, open up and change in ways that I could have only dreamed of before, ways that I could have not even dreamed of before. Right. And that was just by seeing God use my little life, my little story to mm -hmm. help other people choose life over death, um, not choose suicide mm -hmm. and find hope in the Lord and His plans for them. So I eventually started a ministry for people who struggle with suicidal thoughts and depression because mm -hmm. I was being asked to speak so many places and I wanted to help anyone who was hurting or who right. felt lost or who felt broken and I started going to Moody Bible Institute and it was about that time that I was asked to do my last interview on this show. And so a lot has happened since then, um, but I'll let you, you know, lead it from here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so exciting. So you said the last time you were here, you were at Moody. Right. You were in school. Have you finished? What were you studying at the time? What did God do during those college years for you? Yes, um, I loved going to Moody. It was not something I could have ever told you I would do. Mm -hmm. um, as a child, I never thought I would go to Bible college, but it was some of the best years of my life. I love my professors, and the friends that I made there are lifelong friends, and my oh, professors amazing. just really poured into me in, in ways that I hadn't had before, and that was really uh, beneficial and um, nourishing to my, to my soul. I also um, 
just studied women's ministry and biblical studies, okay. mostly biblical studies with a focus on women's ministry. And Can you explain to our viewers <laughs> what biblical studies would be exactly? Sure, sure, yeah. Um, biblical studies was, um, we just focused on all the books of the Bible and Christian you know, theology at its core, what okay. the Bible you know, says about everything really. Oh, okay. And um, really it helped me learn more about how I could, you know, how to talk to other people about the things that I had learned, the things that had changed in my life, like okay. just focusing on scripture, because I didn't want them to just say from my own thoughts, this is what you should do. I mm -hmm. wanted them to be able to say, well, this is what the Bible says. This is the advice that I followed that mm -hmm. you might, you know, consider following too. Mm -hmm. And that was um, really helpful for me. It was just studying the Bible that was amazing, you know, and having professors who had studied it forever Mm -hmm. and who had, you know, just gleaned all sorts of wisdom from it, pour into me, um, mm -hmm. made that, that much more meaningful. And uh, while I was at Moody was when I was asked to share my story here and asked to share my story actually on the Oprah show. And oh, that, yes, that's right. that really changed uh, my ministry and made it a much, you know, more public and um, broader reach than we had ever had before. So that... Um, the Oprah effect. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I guess. So what happened when you were able to share it on Oprah? Like, um, how was her reaction and what happened with your ministry? Well, her reaction was pretty positive. I mean, the show she was doing was for people who had survived their own suicide attempts mm -hmm. and were using their second chance at life to make a difference in the world. Mm -hmm. And that was pretty fitting for my <laughs> life. Right. Um, but um, the show, the interview went really well. I mean, it was almost like over before it started. I think I was interviewing with her for maybe like eight minutes and okay. I was back on campus for my two o'clock class. Like, <laughs> but it went really, really well and God used it more than anything. I am I, you know, couldn't have told you what would happen from that day forward, but we got thousands of emails um, mm -hmm. through our ministry website from people who were struggling or people who had been impacted by me sharing my story mm -hmm. the way that I did, just as openly as I could, through, you know, the ups and downs and what God had done, and so that was pretty, pretty amazing. What were some of the responses you got? Well, the one that stood out to me the most was one that was sent in by a young man mm -hmm. who um, put in the subject line in bold letters, capital letters, you saved my life. And people had said things like similar mm -hmm. to that to right. me when I had started speaking and sharing my story, but never so clearly in those particular right. words. And so that was yes. just like, Wow, and I opened the email and I read this story from this young man who was planning to take his life that day that my interview with Oprah aired. He was just waiting for his mom to leave for work. Oh, wow. And after she left for work, he walked into the living room with a gun in his hand, meaning to turn off the TV because she had left the TV on when she left for work. And we went to turn the TV off. I was on the TV talking about my attempt to take my life, how. Um, I feel that was a huge mistake, but how God completely transformed my life since then, how I lost my legs, but God showed me that I was a whole person and that I had a lot to live for and that there was real meaning to life and there was so much more to life because I could know Him. And wow. he said that he got on the floor on his knees and just prayed to accept Jesus as his Lord and Savior that day and chose not to take his life. He put the gun on the floor and just completely surrendered his life. And now he's a youth pastor, so that's one of my favorite stories to tell because he now, oh, wow. having God transformed his life, shares Christ with young people all over the place. Oh, that's so amazing that your story like has so impacted um, someone like that, that they go and minister through mm -hmm. that too. Yeah, I could have never, I mean, it's an unbelievable to me when I hear stories like that. I, we still get stories from people through the website all the time, who read the book or, yeah. or whatnot, who heard me speak. and. I'm always like, that's God, that's not me, that's just Him. I, I could have never done the things that are happening. Well, let's talk about the book, Life in Spite of Me, Extraordinary Hope After a Fatal Choice. What led you to write it and what did you put in it? Like, um, tell people about it. Sure. Um, what led me to writing the book mostly was just seeing how God was using my story whenever I would speak publicly. Mm -hmm. And after I had been on Oprah, I was getting more speaking requests than I could answer around mm. the world to places I knew I would never be able to go. And I felt a burden for that. I wanted to go everywhere so right. that I could share what God had done and what He could do in their lives exactly. with everyone that I could. Yes. But I knew that I probably wasn't going to be able to go all the places that I was being asked to go. And I started to realize that a book could go everywhere if I put oh, my story into so a book. True. 
and I had a lot of people asking me if they could write my story uh, mm. for me. So it was kind of in the back of my mind that mm -hmm. maybe I would do that someday. Um, but I didn't decide to do it until I met my co-author that I ended up writing the book with. And she was just a really special woman with a heart for the Lord and heart for people, um, unlike uh, many of the other people that I met. And she wanted to write my story with me. She didn't want to do it for me. She wanted to do it with me. And that just um, said a lot to me and made me uh, really want to consider her and pray about working with her. Right. Trisha Goyer. I'm sorry. It is Kristen Jane Anderson with Trisha Goyer. Right. So you guys wrote it together. Mm -hmm. um, so how did you guys meet and it come about? Well, she had, like other authors, emailed me okay. after seeing my interview with Oprah and just wanting to help however she could. And what was different about her email was that she told me her story and how God had come into her life, how Jesus had changed her heart. And mm -hmm. she had been a teen mom um, who came to Christ in her grandmother's Bible study. Oh, and wow, that's amazing. Her story was just really special, seeing how far she had come. Mm -hmm. and then she had two more children and um, had this you know, great you know, husband and family and normal struggles, but they just were living for the Lord and there right. were blessings all around them. And I just loved how vulnerable she was with me and how she wanted to work with me and not just kind of like do the story on her own and, and see where that went. But it was an amazing experience working with her. So how did you set up the book? Like, how does it start out? Well, it starts out actually the night of my attempt. Mm -hmm. um, it starts out the night of my attempt and then it goes into my childhood where I'm kind of starting to ask after I lost my legs, after my suicide attempt, how did I get here? Mm -hmm. How did this happen? How did mm -hmm. this become my life? And it moves forward from there. Mm -hmm. And in between some of the chapters, several of them, I have a personal note that I wrote to myself at that time in my life and more importantly to the reader, the things that I wish I would have known, things I right. would have um, said to myself uh, now looking back. And I've heard that those are some of the most special parts for the readers who have read it. Yeah, that is really special that you did it that way. What is one of the ones that you recall mm -hmm. that's like really special to you? Um, there are two favorites that I have. The first one would be the one after the first chapter, mm -hmm. and the next would be the one after chapter five. Do you want to read a part of that for us? Which which one do you think? Um, you could do the first one if you okay, like. Okay, let's do the first one. Let's see if I can find it here. I think it's page 13. Yes, good job. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is what I wrote. I said, if you're struggling with suicidal thoughts, I know how you feel. Life is harder and more painful than you ever thought it could be. You're not sure if life is worth it. But I'm telling you, there is so much to live for, more than you have ever experienced or imagined. Somehow, I hope my story will show that to you. Please don't give up. You are not alone. There is a God who made you, and he's not as far away as you may think. He is always near. Wherever you go, whatever you do, he will be with you. He loves you and he wants to comfort you, heal the hurt in your heart and carry you through this life. Let him in. God has an amazing plan for your life, even if you don't have a plan for yourself. He has a hope for you, even if you don't have hope for yourself. He loves you immensely, even when you don't love yourself, and he sees beauty in you, even when you only see a mess. Suicide is never the answer. There is too much to live for. Keep fighting. Please don't give up. Reach out for help. You won't regret it. Your heart can be filled with hope, just like mine, and so many others have been. Love, Kristen. Wow, that's really powerful, especially uh, from someone who's been in the same place. I think so many times, you know, people tell you that, but they don't have that experience. And so for you to personally write that, that's really amazing. You said that God loves you immensely, even when you don't love yourself. Mm -hmm. How would you um, have someone who how would you talk to someone who's contemplating suicide and you're trying to tell them that God loves them? How would you express that to them? Because so many people think, well, if God loved me, my life wouldn't be <laughs> this way. If God loved me, then, you know, this situation wouldn't have happened. I wouldn't feel like this. Like, how do you express that to someone? Yeah, that can be complicated. I always feel like it's important to put it in context of the world that we live in. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's a lot of things that go wrong in this world, and it's because our world is broken and our world is fallen. It's not what God originally intended it to be. Sin mm -hmm. came into the world and it changed everything. Right. And so I, I try to put that in context and to show them, help them to see how God shows his love even in the midst of a broken world, how he sent Jesus and mm -hmm. how his 
sin covers everything that we've ever done wrong and and is what can put us back into that right relationship with God. And I know that it can be hard for people to see how God can still be good when things go wrong. But mm -hmm. for me, um, it was, I, for whatever reason, easier because I had a foundation of understanding that God was always good. I mean, I even when this happened, I didn't struggle with like blaming Him, which is mm -hmm. unusual, um, especially because I had a second chance at life. I was just grateful. Right. Um, and But what did send me searching was, wanting to know um, if I would have went to heaven or hell if I died. I wanted to know that, knowing that I should have died, and that is when I heard the gospel, when I started asking people if they thought that I would have went to heaven or hell if I died, and that is when I became a Christian and it changed my life. But I really just try to walk through people's lives with them and help them see how God has been faithful to them, mm -hmm. how He has shown Himself to them, and how um, he is continuing, you know, to work out the plans that he has for them. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of verses in scripture. Jeremiah 29, 11 is still one of my favorites. And that one is one that I share uh, often just because it was the verse that I hold on, held on to in those darkest, deepest days when yeah. I didn't know what hope I had or what future I might have. Even, and when I didn't have that for myself, I knew that he did. Would you quote it for us? <laughs> sure. Jeremiah 29, 11 is where it says in the Bible, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Declares the, let me start over. Is that okay? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, but to give you a hope and a future. And Jeremiah 29, 13 is where it says in the Bible that if you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. And that was a verse that was also very impactful for mm. me because I didn't realize how how different my life could be if I really, really put my all into seeking Him. And I knew that I found Him so much more when I did that. Instead of just kind of casually going through my day expecting God to show up, I really started praying and seeking Him with all my heart. And the more I did that, the more I saw Him at work in my heart and in my life around me. You said originally that you couldn't go all the places that you wanted to go, but you wrote this book for that. Is this book translated into other languages? Yes. Um, besides English, it is also in six other languages. Wow. So it came out in 2010 in hardcover. It came out 2011 in paperback. And since then, it's went into six more languages around the world. What languages is it in? It's in Romanian. It's in French, um, like Indonesian, some very, you know, interesting languages. And it's pretty exciting for me. Have you gotten any responses from people that have read it in their like native tongue that is in English? Yes, um, yes, it's really interesting because we have to translate our emails now, okay. the ones that come in and the ones that go out. Uh -huh. um, sometimes they're in English, sometimes they're not, but it's been very exciting. So tell me about some of the emails you've gotten from different countries. Well, there was one email we got yesterday from a man who was living in Kenya, and he was from that area. He said he had been given my book from somebody in Australia. Wow. And yeah. <laughs> That's a strange connection, but okay. Yeah. We actually get a lot of emails from Australia, so that was, you know, not too surprising, mm -hmm. but it was exciting to get the email from him because he talked about how he had been at a place where he thought his life was over. He thought that he had nothing left to live for. His marriage was falling apart. His family was falling apart. He just didn't know what to do anymore, mm -hmm. where to turn, and somebody from Australia had given him my book. I'm assuming they were visiting or something. Yeah. And he read it. Uh, it seemed like he knew English pretty well, so it seemed like he probably read it in English. But anyway, he said that after reading the book, um, God just tra transformed his life, similarly to how he did mine. He accepted Jesus. He became well, a great. Christian. Yes. And so did his wife. And now wow. their family is back together. He said that they have more peace and more joy in their house than they ever did before. And he just wanted to thank me for sharing my story and for, you know, writing the book. And that was, I don't know, it's always amazing to me, no matter how many right. times I hear it. I'm, I just know that it's so beyond me. It's not like right. anything special that I really did. It's God and what he did. And making my story what it is and getting it out to people the way that he has. And I'm so glad that it's reached as many people as it has. I never imagined that it would, but in a way it's cool also because it makes it even more worth it what I've been through. It's like, wow, this wasn't a waste. God's used it in ways that right. I could have never dreamed. So, Is it just um, very hopeful to hear that in spite of what's going on in the world sometimes? Yes. Um, I think I was listening to the news yesterday and they were talking about um, someone who um, hurt their child and 
just sometimes you hear such mm. horrific stories and it's um, it's painful and you're like, God, where are you? What are you doing? And so it's so encouraging to hear stories like yours where God has um, not only healed you and helped you through such pain and difficulty, but he's using that story across um, the globe. And it's just a great uh, thing, you know, like what God does and how he how he just makes the gospel travel in such unique ways that you would have never thought possible. Exactly, never. I mean, if I think back, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, any point in my life, I would have never thought any of this would happen. I would never thought that even what God was doing in my life could be used to help other people. I thought it made sense that he would do that in my life to help me, but I never realized he would use it to help more and more and more and more people. It's just unbelievable and it's it's so, you know, much more him than it is me, and I know that, and it makes it, you know, very special to yeah. know that, too. What made you choose this title, Life in Spite of Me? Well, I cannot take credit for the title. I <laughs> wish that I could. I have a great publisher, and they had a meeting that I wasn't even a part of where they came up with this title. They had a lot of different titles there they were throwing around, but this one stood out to everybody, and it couldn't be more perfect. Um, I couldn't have came up with a better one myself because yeah. God has unbelievably, incredibly, and faithfully over and over again, just giving me life emotionally in spite of myself, mm -hmm. physically, and spiritually. I mean, he gave me a new life in spite of myself, in spite of my sin, in spite of my mistakes. Um, he continues to just um, bring uh, renewing to my mind and healing to my heart and hope how, for my future. How did you go through that healing process? Because you said a few months after you got saved, but how was the healing process? It was difficult, it was a journey, but it was um, not only full of lows, it was full of highs. I met all sorts of people that got put in my life. I had an amazing Christian counselor in particular mm -hmm. who just, I wasn't even seeking Christian counseling, but she was like perfect for me. She was so perfect for me. She helped me realize that there was no reason for me not to forgive myself if I could accept God's forgiveness. Mm -hmm. There was no reason for me not to forgive myself. And she had me memorize Romans 8, 1. That was the first verse that I ever memorized. And that's where it says, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And I just memorized that over and over again. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And the more I said that to myself and let it just sink into my heart, the more mm -hmm. I realized there really was no reason for me not to forgive myself. And when I started to work on that, I started to feel a lot of freedom the more that I was able to forgive myself. And she also helped me realize that I And she also helped me realize that I needed to see myself as a whole person, that I was a whole person mm -hmm. in Christ, whether I had my legs or not, I mm -hmm. was a whole person in Him. I had everything that I needed in Christ, and that was really helpful for me as I began to move forward. And there was a woman who I met at the community college mm -hmm. who just shined with more peace and more joy and more love for life than anybody had ever met before. And she was somebody that God used incredibly because I knew that the story that she shared with me and the joy that she shared with me, everything had everything to do with her relationship with God. And she just, I knew she had this incredibly close relationship with Him. And what was the story she shared with you? Well, she um, had been abandoned by her husband. Mm -hmm. She had a daughter who was ill. Um, wow. She had been abused as a child. And she still just had this unbelievable countenance. She was like so excited about her life and about where she was and what she'd been through even like that she, I don't know, it was amazing to me. And I was like, I've never met anybody before who'd been through such terrible things who could have this sort of smile on her face and right. be trusting in God and believing in Him and giving Him glory and praise. I mean, just right. all of it was just like, wow. And I went home after meeting her and I was like, God, I wanna know you the way that lady knows you. Wow. Because I had given my life to Him and I had a relationship with Him, but I, my life wasn't that transformed yet. And what I felt him tell me was, Kristen, you have to let me be your best friend. And that is sort of what rang true to me at the time. I was only like 21. Um, my friends were still sort of my life, but right. I, I was going to them for help with my problems. I was going to my doctors, my parents, um, anyone really, my counselor, but I wasn't going to him for help with mm. my problems. And I realized that night that he was the one who made me. He was the one who knew me better than anyone else. He was the one who knew my problems and the answers to them better than anyone else. So there's no reason for me not to go to him for help with my problems. And the more I went to him, the more I let him be my best friend, the more my heart and my 
my everything changed. The way that I saw myself, the way that I saw the world, the way that I saw my problems, the way that I saw my family. Um, it just, it just brought so much uh, renewing um, mm -hmm. and peace and joy to myself. So, God really. It didn't just start with getting saved, it continued and Oh yes. And you had to seek him partly too. Mm -hmm. Because I think so many times sometimes you get saved and mm -hmm. you think, Well, what now, God? I mean, I did it. Like yeah. <laughs> is this it? Yeah. <laughs> but there's still life, there's still struggle. Mm -hmm. And you're like, Well, why am I not happy? They said I'm supposed to be happy now. <laughs> Yeah, I, like I mean, sometimes that. even when I share my story, I wish I could tell people that it all changed overnight. I mean, just because mm -hmm. it seems like that's a story that it just makes it easier have, to say right. or easier to hear. Um, but it's not really usually that way. And I kind of like now that my story was this journey, that it continues to be a journey mm -hmm. um, because that's what our real lives are like. I mean, sometimes it changes overnight, but that's more the exception. That's not as much the, the norm. Real. And so I want people to see that that regardless of if your life changes overnight or night, God is there, He is real, He's faithful, He's working, um, and He's working for your best interest. He knows um, what you're feeling, He knows what you're going through, He knows what you need, and mm -hmm. He's gonna walk with you every step of the way, you're not alone. Right. And I just have seen that every day of my life. Um, I've seen that continually. He's just been so faithful as I've moved forward, and it's, it's great to be able to know that um, I don't have to trust in myself or in, in, right. in this world. Bigger I have somebody along. bigger than myself and bigger than this world who's definitely in better control than I ever could be. Right, that is such a powerful thing to really know. I think so many, I mean, that's a lot of times why people commit suicide because they feel helpless and out of place and like there is no control and there is no one mm -hmm. there for them. Um, but so we have you, you, uh, attempted suicide. God has led you to Himself. He started leading you through. You were going to Moody Bible. What happened after Moody Bible? Well, in about 2008, I met a great Christian man who just, I always tell people, he loved me more like Christ than anybody I've ever met before. Oh, wow. Um, he just has this very selfless, sacrificial, servant type of a love. Um, and I it started uh, getting to know him because he started volunteering with my ministry and I saw him all the time. He helped with everything that I needed and that was sort of like, I always tell people like the way to my heart, but I got to know him on a personal level and the more we became friends, the more I felt like this might be the person that God has for me and I prayed about it a lot and, and we started dating and then we ended up getting married in 2011. He brought two very, very special, beautiful children into my life. Um, who blessed me in ways that I could have never imagined oh, wow. um, ever. And in 2012, we had our own little baby boy that oh. we named Grayson. Oh, wow. And I would like to share that we named him Grayson. Uh, this is really interesting because I would have, you know, I had names picked out as mm -hmm. a kid, but I wanted to make sure that I was giving God honor with mm -hmm. the way that we named him. We named him Grayson because of the grace that God had on me, right, um, mostly right. that night, also on my husband in his life, but especially in my life because I know that I shouldn't have had a second chance, but God gave me grace. He gave me his unmerited favor, favor that I didn't deserve in spite of myself, in spite of my mistake, in spite of my sin. And I wanted, you know, Grayson's name to reflect um, what God had done in, in both of our lives. So, Right, and you see that miracle every time you look at Him and mm -hmm. say His name, that God is gracious and kind, and yes. He even um, gives you children and a family. Was that um, a struggle for you at one point to think that that might even happen for you? Or? Yes, I mean, especially b before I tried taking my life, and after that I questioned it. Like, I, I actually struggled with suicidal thoughts and depression more after my suicide attempt than I did oh, before. Really? Um, and that was difficult um, and it made me wonder, you know, that was part of the reason was because I didn't know if anybody, you know, if I, what kind of a mom I could be, what kind of a wife I could be mm. without my legs. Um, it, you know, had transformed my life in a lot of ways physically and I just really wasn't sure how hard or difficult or easy or anything that mm -hmm. would be. Um, but I always felt when I prayed about it that God created me to be a wife and a mother. And I, like, I always, I just always knew that. So it's right. been cool now to see that come to, you know, um, come to life. To see, right? You know, sort of like that promise almost revealed, and it's been awesome to live it. 
how is that working out as um, a mother who is um, in a wheelchair, but you know you're still trying to run after a <laughs> you know a two-year-old, a, a toddler. Yeah, he um, is a ball of energy, and I love you know being his mom. Right. I actually think I thought that it was going to be harder than it has been in a wheelchair. Um, I kind of don't let anything hold me back. Uh -huh. I just figure out a way to do whatever I need to do. A lot of times it's different. It's, a lot of times it's the same. I just uh, do whatever I need to, and I've gotten a lot better at asking people for help when I need that. Mm. Um, but I'm able to take care of him, you know, all the time for the most part uh, on my own when I'm with him. Right. I don't, you know, need a lot of help. So that's been exciting. It's been refreshing. It's been encouraging. Um, and for him, it's all he's ever known. Right. So. So he, from the time he started sitting up, uh, he he would ride around on my lap uh -huh. without a carrier, without anything, and he knew like that he should be still. Like if he went to the side a little bit or forward a little bit, I just pull him back towards myself, and now he knows. You know, like when mommy's wheeling around, I just have to sit here and re relax right. back against her. And right. people are always like, "Wow, he just sits there." And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's pretty cool. It's a blessing, and um, it's cool to me because I think he'll grow up knowing that like you can be in a wheelchair and still be a normal person and still do normal things and